A 15-year-old pupil who had an ancestral calling has died by suicide. Mbale Jangobese was in grade 10 at Nombiga High School. She'd been staying at home after she was not allowed to attend school while wearing a traditional healer's attire. We were told that was back in March. Following a public outcry, she was then later allowed to continue with her studies. Let's unpack the circumstances that led to her death. And we're joined now by one KZN TV news reporter, that's Precious Vubu, who actually brought the story to the public when it initially broke. Precious, it's lovely to have you on Newsroom Africa. Thank you so much for making time to speak to us. Let me begin by just understanding how you came across and balance the story. Um, good morning, Ayanda, and your viewers. Um, I came across the story when um, a community member of, of, of um, the organization called Umberto Development Committee uh, contacted us as they were approached by the mother who was stressed because her child had been out of school um, since March this year, uh, claiming that the principal expelled her because she was a Sangoma and wearing um, her ibai on top of, of, of her school uniform. And the principal expelled her saying that um, her wearing the, the ibai is not part of, of her uniform. So we went there and, and, and had a chat with the young lady and together with the mother. Um, and she said that um, she, 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 she was scared or, or she felt like um, the school principal was 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 not being justice was not being justice to her as 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 she had the right to education to education. Yeah, and from your conversations with her, precious, I mean, what were you able to gauge around how she was actually doing? I mean, I can imagine as a 15-year-old being teased for anything can be quite traumatic, let alone something that's not in your control, like an ancestral calling. Um, she was. In a bad mood, she was in a bad space as she was saying that she is being left alone at home um, and she is not catching up at school since her peers are continuing with school. And um, she felt that justice was not served for her as she is a Sangoma, not by choice, but the circumstances. So she, she was in a very bad space. Sure. Of course, the education mm -hmm. department um, has been involved in some ways. In fact, we tried to reach out to them to get them to, to be part of our discussion. They sent a statement saying that they did intervene and that U Mbalente was allowed to go back to school. Is that true? Yes, it's true. After we broke the story, um, the Department of Education um, did intervene and um, she was sent back to school after a day of us uh, broadcasting the story. Is that where it ended? I mean, you know, to be sent back to school in a context where you know, for instance, those running the school don't approve of your presence, that environment might still be, let's call it hostile, for lack of a better term. Mm. Um, you know, what kind of interventions took place thereafter, if any? Um, she was, the Department of Education only brought her back to school, but according to her mother, since we have been in contact with her yesterday, she said that Mbalente did mention that um, she was not getting a, a good attention from the school principal and, and, and other teachers, some of the teachers and other learners as well as uh, they were treating her and she was under a lot of pressure. And um, since she was, she, she stopped going to school in March and only returned when she was supposed to write her exams and she was not prepared and everything. So she, she felt like she was under pressure and she was being ill-treated in her school. Sure. Um, this is a difficult question, but you know, typically when somebody is in a, a difficult space, um, there are warning signs that they display. And because of that, mm -hmm. people typically pay a whole lot more attention on their movements. This is not always the case. Of course, I must, I must hasten to add that. How's the family doing, given what's taken place? Because they've been involved from the beginning. Um, they're very devastated. Yeah. I mean, they had hopes that um, Valente, like any other uh, child, will have a bright future uh, since her mother is a single parent. So they had hopes. Um, her mother was very devastated um, because she tried everything to try and resolve this issue uh, to give her child a better uh, future and education. So they're not really in a good space. Of course. 
And um, this is a story that did cause outrage in the community itself when it first emerged that Mbalente was being suspended on the basis of her wearing ibai. What's been the community yes. reaction to this? Um, according to our finding, there are two sides since some community members, I mean, they feel like uh, they share the same sentiments as the principal, like um, her wearing it by is not part of the school uniform, and we have uh, different beliefs in culture. So others were saying uh, the principal was right. And some are saying, I mean, we are in the province of KwaZulu-Natal, where culture is, is it's, it's a very serious thing. So they are saying that it is wrong and every child uh, under any circumstances has a right to education. So there are two sides from the community. Yeah, I guess part of the question to be asked is what harm would it have been to just allow her to wear this ibai, you know, at least to the education of other people who are involved there. But Precious, thanks very much for the work you've done in highlighting the story. It's so tragic that this is how things have ended. And hopefully, hopefully, at the very least, great lessons will be learned. Precious Mvubu is a news reporter with One KZN TV News. They brought us that story. And she joins us now live from KZN.